Hey everyone, welcome to Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. I am Becky, and I am joined for this quick shot by Leah. Hi, Leah. Hi, Becky. How's it going? It's going. Um, so this title has been been on my TBR for a long time. Um, this mm-hmm. author is actually a listener. I connected with her over on the Tiki Talk. The Tiki Talk. Um, and I ha- she teased this book as she was writing it. So I do want to say that this is only the second book she's written. And mm-hmm. she was teasing this title and she's like, he's a grumpy movie star. And I'm like, I, I like a grumpy guy, but he's not, he's movie, not star. movie star. He's not a movie star. I mean, they work in film. His brother is the movie star. His brother is the movie star. But his brother wasn't that grumpy. Well, he might have been grumpy in his book. We don't know. No, I did. I read the first book. We didn't read his book. Oh, did you? I did. I didn't didn't think he was that grumpy. I pulled a Becky. I just read book two. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I do need to go back and read book one because I really like that couple. But I, I haven't yet. But I will say, like, as if this is her only her second book. It is. Yeah. You would never know. Like yeah. it is well written. It is well structured. It is well edited. Like I, like you would not know going into this book. It was her sophomore because there was no slump. No slump. I mean, granted again, I didn't read book one. So maybe book one was like fantabulous. And this <laughs> one was just amazing. And so my, maybe it did slump, maybe. but it didn't slump. As, I don't like, think it did. The first book that I read. Um, so on this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, we are reading Done and Done by Leonore Solis. Yes. And I asked her and specifically. I was, was going to say, side note, she sent us an audio message of how to pronounce her name. I did. Well, I sent her a message and I said, can you please send me a voice memo? Because it's really important to me that if I can, I want to make sure I'm getting names right. So um, we will link the synopsis of this book in our on-the-shelf show notes at buzzingaboutromance.com. Give us all the breakdowns, Leah. Okay, so this book was released April 17th, 2023. The tropes are enemies to lovers, one night stand, close proximity, real-bodied heroine. It is a grumpy sunshine. They are co-workers. It is from the Hollywood Love series. This is book two. Um, It is a series of standalones. I read it on its own. It stood very well on its own. Like you do not have to read book one. Um, It is third person multi and the put out percentage is 23%. But I will caveat that with saying that there does seem to be a bit of a slow burn to that 23%. There is. And then after the pop, it doesn't pop for a while. So yeah. it's kind of like that backwards slow burn where they, they do the dirty and then like the relationship builds from there. But it works really well. And I really love these characters. Um, third act breakup? Kind of. I didn't know how to answer this. <laughs> well, it's <sighs> like they they do the deed and then they they're not together. So it's kind of like a third act come together, not yeah. a third act breakup. Yeah. Um, content warning, anxiety and depression. And I actually want to talk about this for a little bit because I felt like this was so incredibly well done. Mm-hmm. Um, so the fact of the matter is, is our hero, Alex, is the one who is suffering from depression and anxiety Mm -hmm. and he goes to therapy yeah and he talks about his feelings so total bonus points for a man who seeks therapy but i really felt like his alex's depression was presented in a way that um you rarely hear hear people talk about it you know Mm -hmm. he wasn't sad no he He was was angry and hostile and nothing Mm -hmm. was satisfying or pleasing Mm -hmm. and um, he was just kind of cycling through his life like it was repetitive nature and it's like he got in this funk of life like but nothing ever brought him joy it was like this slow funk of chaos but one thing I really like too though is the fact that there's a point in the story where He's talking to his family and his brother talks about how he has been in therapy for years and he has like worked through his issues and all that things. So like the mental health rep in this book, in the fact that the therapy for different things 
works for these people and the way they go she wrote it was it was real very real it really was and I just I really felt like it was important <clears throat> to talk about this because sometimes you know we will get the depression and the anxiety but not typically in our heroes mm -hmm. typically is presented in the heroines um and it's this is not something that him being in love changes him. He still has to continue to take his meds and do the mm -hmm. work. And even though he's with the person he's supposed to be with, it's not this magic healing. And I just liked yeah. how Leonor, she wrote that because those yeah. feelings felt really um, genuine. And it just, it was just so well done. Well, and like personally, as somebody who has dealt with depression and anxiety and who went through like therapy for her depression and her anxiety, like the way in which like he talks about his therapist and the tools that like he's given, like those, she's spot on. Like those are some of the things that like my therapist had talked about like at the time. And so it's one of those things where like, I was so happy she didn't shy away from the realness of it. Yeah. Because I feel like there are sometimes books where like they talk about it and it's a big part of the story, but it's almost glossed over, but she did not do that at all. Like it was a very big conversation between Alex and Ellie and there was a lot of focus on it. Yeah. So our heroine's name is Ellie. Um, and another thing that is so incredibly well done, like this is top tier representation for plus size, real bodied mm -hmm. heroine. Um, yeah. I loved this so much. This rep was, I actually think that this rep was better than some of the Olivia Dade books that I've read. I agree. And she, she does an excellent job with a real body heroine. Yeah. Like, and, well, just real body, like in general, cause she, like her heroes aren't always like that felt figure either. Yeah. Like she does real people. And I thought that, yeah, I thought this was excellent. And the fact that like there were hangups, but she was super confident in herself too. Yeah, like we got lots of curves mm -hmm. and he grabs her ample hips, watches mm -hmm. her butt, her boobs jiggle or yeah. the way he touches her soft tummy. Like mm -hmm. the words in the descriptors she did work so amazing went well. And in a previous book that I had read that claimed to be plus size heroin, which really the heroine was maybe a size 16. Um she was not put in any sexual positions in this book that would physically be impossible if you have big thighs and a big butt. Mm -hmm. And kudos, kudos for writing it this way. Like, mm -hmm. I'm this was top tier plus size rep. Well, but one thing I really liked about it too, though, is like when they went, they went to these meet like galas basically to, to network and things like that. And Elena got dressed up. She wore these beautiful ball gowns and she was like dressed to the nines and like, she, but she wasn't afraid to show her body off. Like as like, this is who I am. This is my body and I am beautiful no matter my size. And I thought that was an excellent thing because so often you read a real body heroine and they have all those mental hangups. Like they can't wear something's I can't wear this dress because of my size. I can't do this because of my size. And I didn't get that in this, this heroine yeah. at all. No, it was so great. I will say though, Ellie, um, she is incredibly stubborn, almost mm -hmm. too stubborn, which makes her a little bit of a harder heroine to fall in love with. But it does create mm -hmm. this moment where in this book, Alex steals the show. Our yeah. hero is the shining star of this book. Yeah. Well, and I think part of it, though, is like she's I think Elena, like part of it is she's so driven and she's so like. She, there's so many little intricacies to her personality that she, I think that she felt like if she didn't have that stubbornness and hold on to like her morals and laurels, then then she was going to get run over. And so like she held on to that like almost with an iron fist and she she didn't have a lot of give at first no but definitely by the end of the book like she was willing to listen and willing to compromise and i really enjoyed that part of it i do think that this book is very character driven over storyline mm -hmm. driven yeah. um the most of the story is showing great character growth and development mm -hmm. through the book versus 
this is point A and now we need to get to point B. Like, but I liked well, that. And it felt different. It did. And the one thing though, is she showed all that growth through the interactions with other characters too. So part of their the company that his brother and Elena's best friend, so Liam and Anna or Anna, I'm not sure how you pronounce that one, are starting this production company. In Hollywood. But in Hollywood, but they are they've done interviews for like student interns, like young adults doing these internships. And there's so many interactions with these kids and the fact that like the like Elena and Alex stand up for these kids when they need to. And there are moments that are really profound in the way they stand up for these kids. And I think, and that's part of it too, is there's so many interactions with different people in this book where you really see the growth and the development of their personalities and the changes they go through because of the people that are around them. Yeah. Um, so our hero, we said this is a grumpy sunshine and he is a grump, but he is a grump outside of his depression and anxiety. He is mm -hmm. just like, honestly, as I read this book, I'm like, dude's like a little black rain cloud. Mm -hmm. He's just, well, and there's, cause there's a <laughs> moment where they're at his parents' house. Like, Liam has come home to talk to Alex and like his parents are like, I, we didn't realize it at like that this was a thing because like you, your personality didn't change. Like you're just kind of in a funk. So like they, they're like, if we had realized something like we would have, we would have said something, whether or not it would have mattered, who knows? But like, yeah, he was still that grumpy person before that. Right. So it was like a subtle change. <laughs> um so we said this is enemies to lovers and obviously yeah. <laughs> okay so just real quick guys like as the storyline they're trying to build this production company and secure funding and investors and mm -hmm. stuff like that but really because the characters are so dynamic in this book like everything i want to talk about is character driven and not storyline driven but i think that this book it really worked like this the storyline was almost the second act of this book, like the characters were the shining star and shining moment of this book. And I, and, and I, and I like that so much, like this, in that sense, like they could have been doing anything, like they could have went anywhere. It felt the really way these fresh characters were written was just so good. And I felt like this story was really felt fresh. It mm -hmm. didn't feel just like any old contemporary romance. There was a freshness no. to her, points of view and how she handled things and the things that are talked about. And one of the things that I thought was really well done was the enemies to lovers aspect, because it really came down to, I'm attracted to you, but I don't want to be with you. Also, why are you so annoying? Yeah. <laughs> that mm -hmm. sums up their enemies to lovers movement. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, and the thing is like, they fight and they bicker and it's like, they, they want to get along, but like all these little, like they find the one like pet peeve about the other one and like pick at it. Yes. Because they don't want, like it was supposed to be done and done. Yeah, like, that's like night. a recurring thing. One night, done and done. done. And so they don't, they don't want to go back. But this banter, <laughs> if you like a heavy dialogue bantered mm -hmm. book, read this book. The banter in this book was phenomenal i loved it i was engaged in it um i could have read a hundred more pages of banter between the two of them i could too but just some of the dialogue too like here's one it says yes but now he defies our agreement and he dares be less of an ass as, and more like a grump who can be quite sweet like a stern brunch daddy and then there's some some back from the other character and then she, she's like no problem not my kink either i mostly care about the stern brunch part of it because <laughs> Don't call him daddy. Don't call him daddy. Um, okay, so one of the things that I thought was interesting is Alex is celibate. He has the one night stand and he's pretty much celibate until they come together, right? Mm -hmm. Ellie goes on a date. But nothing really happens. They just go on the date. Right? Yeah. But she goes she does, on a she does go on the, she does. She goes she on a goes date. She goes on a date after they've banged. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Well, because it was a one-night stand, and they were they were not supposed to see each other again. I mean, the author did a good job. She didn't give us any details of this date. We don't really have any intricacies of the date. It just happened. But I just kind of liked that she did that to reinforce... Mm -hmm. Because this is a pet peeve for you sometimes in romance, particularly with the second chance, um, yes. you know, after a one night stand or a one time moment, and then they come back together, you know. And the hero has been out banging everything that lives and the yeah. heroine is just like, oh, I've loved him so much. I'm just going to like stay chased for him forever, which that's not reality. 90% yeah. of the time it could uh, happen, but it's not always real. Like the women sometimes like to get out there too, people. Yeah, women women have needs too. Um, they do. I think one of the best things about this book is these characters feel real. Mm -hmm. They have flaws. They have very distinct personalities, and they had good and bad days. And it wasn't always sunshine and rainbow every oh, minute no. on the page. But even because even when they get together in the last couple chapters, like it's still not sunshine and rainbows. Like there's still conversation. There's still like there's still issue. But you believe in their HEA. Like you understand it. You're like you are gunning for them. Not gunning for them, but you you know what I mean. Like you believe it. You're rooting, you know you're cheering for them. You're, you're on their them. team. Yeah. But you realize like they they are a real couple. Like their reality. Like it's not this facade of romance that we sometimes get where it's over the top and it seems unbelievable like these are two real people who you could meet like walking down the street and sometimes like i don't always need that in a romance book i don't i love those like fantasical fantastical like ones sometimes but every once in a while it's nice to read like a real person too and that's just it these they, they had doubts they had ambitions they felt human. Like there was humanity mm -hmm. to these characters that was relatable. And again, it just felt incredibly fresh for me, especially as mm -hmm. I've been in the dark era to come out and yeah. read something that is so, it was like a breath of fresh air, but mm -hmm. it, it just shows that love can be perfect for you, even with imperfections. Yeah. Well, and I think part of it though, like, and I will say like when I was reading it, it was a little bit slower of a read, but again, like I've been in the dark era and like my suspense life has been like hardcore lately. And so, but this was such a, was such a change in like the, the story itself doesn't flow super fast. Like the timeline makes sense. Um, but it just, it was like, it was just new and different from so many books, so many contemporary books that we have been reading. Yeah. Um, okay, so one of the things that I love best, and we all know this is going to end in HEA, you guys, right? Mm -hmm. I loved that they moved in together. Yeah. It's not an engagement. No. It's not a marriage. There's no, no babies in sight. No babies in sight. And I like this because, again, not every HEA looks the same. So I just, I no, really you appreciate don't, that. You don't need that ring. You don't need that baby. Like maybe in the future, like if we get more books in this series, maybe in the future we'll see that, but maybe we won't. And that's okay too. And I like that. I am so, I so solidly believe in their HEA though. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't one where I need an epilogue five years down the road. I didn't no. need it. These people were meant to be together. They are better together than they are apart. Well, and I think the way that the story progressed, like you go through so much with them to get when they get together, like them getting together was a process. It wasn't like this instant connection. It wasn't, I mean, they had kind of an instant connection, but it wasn't this like instant love, like we're going to move in like next week, which sometimes I need that. But this story, the way that it plays out, if months for them, like, from when they start working together until they move in. It is a long timeline of romance and growth and change and healing. Yeah. So it it worked really well. I just, I really liked it. So if you haven't read it, you should absolutely pick up Done and Done by Leonore Solis. And mm -hmm. it is available with your Kindle Unlimited subscription. So yes. Anyway, Leah, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Always. It's always a good time talking books. Um, until next time, everyone. Happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. 
you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.